Welcome back. You don't usually think of death when you think of living your best life, but maybe you should. Death doulas are people who offer non medical end of life support, and I first heard about them during the pandemic because let's face it, there has been a lot of death lately. The CDC says 3.3 million Americans died in 2020, up 17% from the year before. So in this week's Your Best Life, I met with a death doula and one of her clients to find out what this work is all about and why it's so necessary for those who pass away and for those they leave behind. Kinsel and I married on November 1st of 2014 and 22 days later received a stage four diagnosis of metastatic melanoma with a prognosis of approximately six months to live. It wasn't the blissful start to married life Garrett Colwell hoped for, but he took the vows in sickness and in health seriously. As a grief educator and longtime hospice volunteer, Garrick jumped into action to help his bride. I did some research here locally and found a death doula, and I thought, well, what is a death doula? And so I googled that and I found that the person who basically started the death doula movement lived here in Austin. And her name was Dana Cochran, so of course I called her. As a doula, you're walking with people through the unknown, through the wilderness of the unknown. The ultimate goal was to be there so they're not alone. Deanna Cochran is a hospice and oncology nurse who's been a death doula since the early 2000s. She and Garrick started meeting for tea to talk about what a death doula does, and Kinslow would sometimes join them. It was very helpful to her because it gave her uh, a space with someone to be able to process and explore what she thought was taking place as she approached the end of her life. Through experimental treatments, Kinslow held on far longer than her doctors thought she would. But she died in Garrick's arms on February 12, 2019. I said, all you need to do is walk out. Your mother and your father and the Mahatta will be there to greet you. And I will see you in my dreams. She took two more breaths and she was gone. Now he devotes himself to the organization they started together. Kitchen Table Conversations, where he helps people with their advanced care planning. We only die once as far as we know, and as a result, you know, it's uncharted territory for us. He also educates people and their families about end-of-life options and support, like death doulas. It makes a big difference when you do have the support for you to be able to be present to the sacredness of the passing and not miss that opportunity to be able to hold their hand, to love them, um, as they take their last breath. Deanna says that's exactly what she aims to do for her clients. Hold space for them as they approach death and be there for their loved ones after they're gone. It's uncomfortable to sit with people who are suffering, who are sad about leaving, um, with caregivers who are sad their loved one is going. It's indescribable. It's overwhelming. Many times I pull over when I leave a house and just sob because you watch love. You're, you're in the midst of love that is going to change. She knows this work is vital, and it's why she's teaching death doulas all over the world, training them to be companions until the end. It's not that we make people less afraid. We can't do that, right? And it's not my job to do that. What you're doing is being there for people. Now, Deanna and other death doulas often do work alongside hospice care teams when they are called to do their job. And in fact, Deanna was a hospice and oncology nurse for years before becoming a death doula. If you're interested in finding out more, you can do that over on our website, kcentv.com. We'll be right back.